Here we go. Perfect. Okay. Oh, that's going to be the beginning of my video. Lovely. All right. So let's talk about Euclidean geometry. This is something that you are, are already familiar about, whether or not you realize that. So what I have here on this piece of paper, which would represent a flat two-dimensional plane, are three different points, A, B, C. I'm going to connect those three points, which is going to create what we call a triangle, right? Okay, so I'm gonna create this triangle by connecting these three points. And I have my protractor here, so I'm going to measure the degrees of each of these triangles. I'm sorry, each of the angles inside of my triangle. So right here I'm measuring angle C, and it looks like angle C is at, uh, that's about like 46 degrees, between 46 and 47. So I'm gonna put 46 degrees right here. Okay, and then angle A is going to be about, let's see, that looks like it's about 35 degrees, 35 degrees. Now angle B is about okay well that's very close to 80 degrees I'm gonna say it's about 79 degrees it's about 79 oh wait a second I was looking at the wrong, the wrong measure. That's about 99 degrees, 99 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to add these three numbers together. So whenever I add 35, 99, and 46, I get fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, a hundred and eighty degrees. So when I'm looking at this triangle and I add the three angles, I'm going to get a hundred and eighty degrees. Now we know that that's true because we've already talked about the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. So this holds true when we are looking at Euclidean geometry, which is on a flat two-dimensional plane. So now what I wanna talk about is something that is more realistic to our planet that we live on. So here, <laughs> I did not have string, so I was able to use um, some headphones to, to accomplish the goal that I wanted. So what I did, this is a globe, right? So that represents our Earth. And I created a triangle on the globe. I tried my best using the, the string and uh, the headphones. So if you can tell just from looking at it from the different perspectives here, the triangle isn't flat because we're on a sphere, right? Because we're looking at the earth. So the sides of this triangle have some curvature to them. And I want to show you the different angles if I were to add up the sum of the angles on this triangle when we're looking at a sphere. So here at the top, 
from this location right here to over here, if you look at the top, it's going in increments of, let's see, this was listed as 60. So from here to here, 60 to 30. So these are 30 degrees each. So from here to here is 30 degrees. That means from here to here is also 30. That means right here at the top, this top angle part of the triangle is 60 degrees. Now I'm going to go down here, traveling through Europe, traveling through Africa, and I'm coming to our equator, which is the only latitude line that's considered a great circle because it, it would be the same as like the largest size circle that you could create from the globe. So let me move this just a little bit. So here, this latitude line intersects with this longitude line at a 90 degree angle. And it doesn't look exactly like a 90 degree angle, but I think you can see it for the most part pretty well here. That's a 90 degree angle. Now let me go to the third angle in my triangle here. And we see the same thing. It's my lat my equator, which is the latitude line intersecting with this longitude line, which is creating another 90 degree angle. So if we look at this, so let me step back again, sorry. And if we're looking at the triangle on this sphere, we're gonna see that it actually is not following the same rules as what we saw with Euclidean geometry. So what I have here is just another little paper that is looking at the spherical geometry that we just looked at on the globe. So we saw whenever we connected those lines, if this was my equator, and this was my one of the longitude lines and then this was the other longitude line this was 90 degrees 90 degrees and then up here we calculated that to be 60 degrees so let's find the sum so if we add those together 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 240 degrees would be the angles on this triangle on a sphere. So what I'm getting at is that if you create a triangle on a sphere, it is not going to follow the same rules as what we saw with Euclidean geometry having a sum of 180 degrees. Now, on a sphere, they're not necessarily all going to have a sum of 200 and 30, uh, 240 degrees. It could be a different size than that, but this is just really cool to look at the sphere and recognize um, that there's curvature and so that creates the different sized angles on a triangle. And you can also see this whenever you're looking at the flight patterns, um, whenever you're traveling the globe. All right, I hope that was a helpful representation to understand the difference between spherical and Euclidean geometry.